Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back for another episode of Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast. My name is Michael Lafito, your host. I'm really excited about today's guest, but before we go into that, just a reminder, if you want to listen to other podcasts that we've had in the past, go to LuxuryListingPodcast.com, or you can go to iTunes or Stitcher to download previous episodes. Again, you are in the right spot if you want to differentiate yourself from other agents in your marketplace, if you want to get into that next elevated price point, and hopefully you want to break into and differentiate yourself and dominate selling the high-end and luxury homes. My name is Michael Lofito, your host of the Luxury Listing Podcast. Today's, uh, today's interview, today's guest is David Banks. He's the owner of Remax by the Bay in Portland, Maine. David brings to today's interview, he's been in the industry for over 33 years. Like I said, he's broker owner. He's been with Remax for over 24 years. Uh, he covers the greater Portland area, any, anywhere from 20, 20 miles north of Portland along the coast to 20 miles south of Portland along the coast. And um, just to kind of give you a little rundown on David and some, some bullet points, he did about $153 million in volume last year. He's got a small little team, and, um, which consists of his office. David focuses on listings, and he has his team work with buyers and renters and that sort of thing. And David carries anywhere from 60 to 80 listings at any given time, and the average list price of a single-family home he represents is around the eight to $900,000 price point. So without further ado, David, say hello to everyone. Good afternoon, Michael. Thank you for asking me this. Join this call. Absolutely. So, a little background on David. I was so impressed with him. I did a training for Remax Integra out in New England in Boston this past summer, and um, I saw what David was doing, and I was so impressed. I thought we haven't had anyone on the show from um, from Maine, and we definitely hasn't had anyone doing some of the cool things you're doing. So, what better uh, guest to bring additional value to? Uh, the Luxury Listing Podcast. So thanks again for your time. I know you're busy. And um, so let, let's kind of get right into things. As I mentioned, you've been in this industry for over 33 years. And uh, first, let's talk about definitions. We have agents, David, from from the West Coast to the Midwest region to the southern states to Canada. And we've had you know some guests um, lined up from other countries. And everybody defines luxury differently. Some brands define find it differently personally for our certification luxury listing special certification we define luxury as three times whatever the average sale price is for your given market but for your given market david uh, we talked a little bit offline but what do you define luxury at as in the portland maine area so the portland maine area um if you exclude land, uh, the luxury market is in that eight, $800 to $1 million range. Um, and if you look at our average sale price, it being in the high twos, low threes, and you look at the three times, you know, that eight to nine range is definitely on a luxury market. I typically refer to a $1 million plus as my luxury listings. Um, and... That's a kind of a, a guideline that I use. Okay. That's a fair guideline, and it's a simple guideline. So million dollars plus, uh, to keep it simple. And tell me, overall, is that million dollar plus single family market, is that trending more a buyer's market, more a seller's market? What are you seeing locally? So um, we've had a fantastic year here in the greater Portland, Maine area. Um, a million dollars plus, we have seen some great sales um, and uh, definitely ahead of the last two years um, in, in the marketplace. So we have had a, um, you know, we're seeing properties in that two to three 
to four to five million range um, um, of uh, two two million, three million, four million, five million dollars this year of some sales that really have um, um, come on quite strong. So, in some cases, it's in some cases it's really a um, um, a, a seller's market uh, because the limitations are out there and of number of listings and the buyers there are buyers out there to buy so it, it's really that's worked great. to an advantage of the sellers this year. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, many of these interviews, especially the upper price points, um, and uh, you know, off the top of your head, you might not know this answer. Hopefully, I'm not stumbling you totally. But what what what's the highest priced property currently on the market, single family, in that Portland, Maine market? Um, it's eleven million. Eleven million. Okay. And has that been? Is that what the starting the ask, original asking price was, or has that come down a lot? And how how many days on the market approximately? So the eleven million dollar listing that is in our area, it's been on the market probably for three months. And it is probably a situation where um, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely overpriced and it's probably a real reach for what they're trying to do on the property. Okay. The next listing is one um, that I've listed at $4.9 million and okay. another one for $4.7 million. Um, and, you know, it's, that $5 million to Ten million range is, is very is very limited and very only a few properties in that in that price range on the market. So it's fair to say, like once you get above that five million or close to it, that's kind of where the shift occurs, where it goes really from a seller's market to more of a buyer's market. Correct. Correct. Every marketplace, by the way, those that are listening, every marketplace has that, that breaking point. Again, I talk to agents from all price points, not just luxury agents, and a lot of different parts of the country, it's definitely a seller's market, shortage of supply, a lot of demand, but at some price point, that shift occurs from a seller's market to a buyer's market. So it sounds like it's about the $5 million price point in the Portland, Maine area. Yeah, so it, anything in that one and a half to two and a half million to three million, there are so many limited, great oceanfront properties that if it's a great property, it will get sold very quickly. Um, I just listed one for 2.995, and within a week I had multiple offers and sold to a European family that flew in to take a look at the property and you know, no question asked, full price, and um, we had multiple offers. Um, it, but it was a high-end quality home. Um, last week I had one for $3,750,000, and the first person looked at it, uh, wrote an offer, didn't want to lose it to another buyer because they realized it was just a spectacular oceanfront estate. So those buyers are out there, and if it's really well done, um, you know, it's it's a pretty quick sale. Well, congratulations on both of those. That that's great. Um, Thank so, you. So uh, you're welcome. So tell me a little bit about like your transition in the luxury uh, offline. We didn't really go into details on this, but you've been in the industry for 33 years. About how many years? Maybe it's just because of proximity and, and your demographics um, that it happened sooner. But out of curiosity, how many years into the industry before you really specialized? I mean, you said your average single-family sale price is eight to nine hundred. But you know, wh when did you start making the shift to more elevated price points, and how did that occur? Was there a single occurrence where a light bulb, you know, the, went off, and you're like, "Wow, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out this paycheck is is double." Or how, how did that occur for you, if you don't mind sharing? <clears throat> Yeah, so about um, 30 years ago, I moved to a town, um, Falmouth, Maine. And Falmouth, Maine is probably one of the top four towns um, in the state of Maine uh, from demographics to um, properties to schools. Um, and, you know, 
it's a community that our three children, three children grew up in, and it became an opportunity for me to network with a lot of people in the town through our, our kids, uh, the golf course community, the, the yacht club area. And so living in the community that you want to do your business in and it is a key factor. And so we moved to this town about 30 years ago. Our three kids graduated from the school, very involved in um, social events, um, activities, sponsoring activities throughout the town, and making yourself available in the community to be respected, known, and given back to the community. Um, you know, probably 25 years ago, I, uh, I started a, um, every transaction I sold, I make a donation to two different charities. And one of them is the Barbara Bush Hospital in Portland, Maine, and in, 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 in our community. And the other one is the Center for Grieving Children, which is an organization that helps family members um, grieve on loss of parents or uh, terminal illnesses coming up. And those two organizations um, happen to be very involved in the community here. And we, um, a lot of the physicians uh, for the hospital live in this community, and they know I donate every transaction given back to the community um, to those um, charities. And it's those type of connections make you know you want to give to the community, but also uh, make some great connection with the professional people that. Um, you will interact with on these luxury listings. So that that's just, um, you know, um, an idea that someone, um, if they're looking to get involved in the community, you know, give it back to the community in some type of donation with every transaction. And the donation is made in your client's name. So, um, you know, it's, it's me making the donation in Mrs. Jones' name, and then the, the organization recognizes Mrs. Jones' And thank you for working with David Banks. He's made a donation back to our community and our organization. And your name, Mrs. Jones, and they now get on their mailing list and everything. Uh, but moving into an area that you want to work in um, is so important. And it was probably the best thing I did 30 years ago. Number one, to get my kids in the family schools. But number two, you're networking with everyone that you want to represent in the future. Uh huh. Uh huh. So naturally, for you, it was you know the proximity. You, you actually uh, geog geography. You actually moved your family for for reasons for schooling, it, that sort of thing. And naturally, where you moved them, there were more, more higher end clientele, more higher end homes. Is that fair to say? That's correct. Um, so now, I, I I would one, say anyone one looking. Nugget, one big nugget that you shared that I don't want to downplay. I mean, we're always looking for nuggets on the show, so thank you. You know, tips and suggestions to help agents break into it with the high net worth individuals and and hopefully start attracting clientele. And you talked about charity, char charitable giving. Um, a few episodes back, we interviewed uh, Anthony Margu Mar Margulis. It's hard to say that last name. And the, the topic of his show was how to use strategic giving to grow your network. And and it was very st strategic. He came from a position like a sincerity. He wasn't doing it for the wrong reasons, um, but that was a good episode. So if people want more, uh, you know, takeaways on, um, you know, on, on the strategies, uh, you can listen to that episode. But but that that was really good nugget, David. Both of those organizations, and you you, you make the donation in, in in the person's name as well. Correct. Correct. It's all about the. It's all about your client, and then um, it, it, it's just a, it's great for the charities, and it doesn't matter which charity. Um, these are just two special charities to, um, that connect with me, but if, you, uh -huh. if there's other organizations in someone's um, network um, that can touch a lot of families and benefit a lot of families, it, it just it goes a long way. Okay, I, I I think it's I think it's brilliant, and 
And, you know, it may, at the end of the day, it makes you feel special as well. I mean, you're giving, you're making a difference. Um, yeah. You know, we don't so just sell like, homes. <laughs> you know, we, yeah. we change so at lives. And we'll, so at closing, we give a nice card that um, talks about both charities, and it just says, um, in appreciation of doing business um, with um, the David Banks team, we, we've made these donations, I uh, made donations to both charities in your family's name and and that's how we communicate it and and then the charities will follow up within 30 days with a letter a thank you note for you know working with david and his team and and what they've done for him oh that's that's so. terrific um so no that that's great so you know you get the the thank you at the closing and that's how you notify them and then after the closing, you've, you've set it up with these organizations that they send kind of a, I don't want to use the word scripted, but you've kind of helped them out and say, you know, please state the following items or, you know, you kind of tell them what to say in so many ways. Um, and they write a nice, a nice follow-up from them on their letterhead, that sort of thing. Correct. Okay. Good. Well, I'm excited to share with the group a little bit about this 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 hardcover book as well. As I mentioned when we first opened up, you and I met at a, a live training. I was the keynote for it, and um, you, you know, you you were on a panel and you shared uh, something. Um, why don't you share with with the group a little bit about you know your hardcover um, presentation book, or, 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 or it's, it's property specific, but talk a little bit about that. So about two and a half years ago, my I'm in a um, business coach group, um, and we meet a couple times a year, and it's about 115, 120 people in the group, and um, exchange ideas. And one person made a presentation as their their best um, idea for the year. Um, what they do is they take all the photos for, let's say you list 123 Main Street. Um, they take all their professional photos of 123 Main Street and they put them in a hardcover book, a coffee table book. And they, um, they printed out one book and they would leave it at the house and people come look at the house and they'll be able to look at the book and instead of looking at... Um, a computer screen trying to um, reference a property and everything. And I kind of took everything um, to the next step. So what I do is if I listed 123 Main Street, I would take all the professional photography, make a book, and put in the back of the book the information about Portland, Maine, um, just a little bit about the city, the waterfront, restaurants, and everything. And then I would put um, a two-page um, overview of the individual town 123 Main Street is in. Um, and those are all stock photos right up. So it's just you do it once in each town. When you're going to do a different town, you just pull that town information, the photos, and add it to the book. And then my last page is a bio on myself. And... I typically order three to four books at a time, um, one for the homeowner, and then I um, keep a book with me when I go to a showing. And if a buyer seems interested in coming back for a second time or they were really pumped about the property, and even if they're with their co-broker, if there's another broker there, and they demonstrate um, the interest in the property, I will say to them at the end of the property, let me give you um, a book with some, you know, just some more information about the property. And this book just blows people away. It is, like I said, it's a coffee table book. It costs about $60 to do. So if you're making three copies, you're about $200. Mm -hmm. And my, market, my marketing person does it on a computer. We send it off to Apple books and within uh, typically four days they get delivered and you think that we spent weeks doing these books together. <laughs> so Michael, it's my best 
it's the best presentation to get listings. You show a client what they got, you, what you're going to do for them, and it's um, the buyers go absolutely crazy. Um, I uh, you know I can give you stories where um, I just had one on Cumberland Foreside, and where the buyer came up from um, New Jersey. They were leaving the house. They said, we want to come back a second time. We're not sure what time tomorrow. And the broker said, I'll just give you a call. When they left, I gave them a high cover book. And um, the guy came to my office the next morning and said, I can't get a hold of my broker, but I have to tell you, this book was the best thing for my wife because she hates sitting down, looking at an iPad, and looking at all the photos. She spent all night place and furniture, you know, looking at this book saying, oh, my furniture could go here. And they made an offer on the house. At closing, he said to my client, I do not believe we would have bought this house before we went back to New Jersey if we didn't have this book because the book really cemented the ideas of how my wife could live in the house and um, said to my client, which made me feel great, um, this book was a major part of us jumping on this property versus waiting two or three months to come back for a second showing, um, or a second time up here in Maine. Hot. Exactly. And I bet I could give you 10 stories in the last three months where I've done that with a book, and it's a home run. Um, so take that as, as a great tip, and I, um, someone could contact me if, I, if they need some information. My marketing person would be glad to. Um, give them um, an overview yeah. of that. Yeah, well, well at the end, you'll you know, share your contact information if they have a referral for you or they have a question about the book, for sure. Uh, you know, that a couple things. I'm a huge believer that I, I don't think print marketing is dead. I think there's a higher perceived value with high-quality printed materials um, because, like you said, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can flip through it. And, yes, we're in a digital world, and that's why I think it's easier and there's a higher perceived value when there is a high-quality print, you know, you know, book in this case. So uh, kudos to you for, for trying it and implementing it. And, um, you know, for $200 on, on, the, on the average sale price that you're doing, I mean, what's the ROI on that? The, I don't know what the return on investment is, is pretty strong there. So that's, that's really strong. That's great. Great and stories. I, and I, and I, I do books for 800000 and above. And if there's a house that I – and if, the, if there's a house – I really want the listing. I, you know, I'm in a tough competition, and it's a six hundred thousand dollar house. I'll bring the book out and and say, you know, let me put this book together for you for your home. Um, and you know, typically, you know, I don't do it for that price range, but why not? I mean, it's not it's not the money; it's just time getting the book together. So you can use it in any price range you want. You can do it. For every listing, if you want, it's just based on the number of listings I have. It just would be very time consuming. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty impressive. So everybody on this call, it's different price points. I, you know, what are you willing to invest in yourself to differentiate? And you know, my first lifestyle film that I brought in, you know, four cars on a transport and horses and that sort of thing. It was a four and a half million dollar property. It was actually about three years ago now, David. And I knew that market was difficult, and I knew statistically the probability of the home selling wasn't great, even though I'm an optimist. The reality is I knew the video that I did with the drones and the actors was going to open so many doors. So those of you that are listening to this podcast, you know, this hardcover book, for example, don't look at it as an expense. Look at it as an investment. Try something different. Add it to your arsenal, and it's a point of differentiation. David's been doing this 33 years, and you implemented this how many years ago? Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. So 30 years into your career. So, you know, always looking to get better. So, um, again, you attended the event a month ago where I keynoted a couple, well, in the middle of the summer. So I appreciate you doing that. And you attended. You didn't have to go. You're trying to walk out of there with one gold nugget or more that you can implement. So, again, here you got a guy that's doing $150 million in production. And this year he's on pace for, to beat that. And, you know, he, he's he's Iron sharpens iron. He's trying to better himself. And that's one commonality that I see with top rock star agents. They're hungry. They're aggressive. 
you know, you don't have a scarcity mindset, David. You know, you have an abundant mindset. In other words, you're on here, you're sharing nuggets. Um, and, and so I, I really appreciate that. So the hardcover book, you talk about networking is really important. You mentioned that a little bit with the charities. Um, what, 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 do you, what, what can you say to those in, in regards to networking, the importance of networking? Well, I probably get a real benefit of networking with other agents. And when I was in Boston six weeks ago, Michael, when I met you, um, my idea is trying to connect with people in different territories for referral bases. And that's, that's always been a great referral um, you know, opportunity for me. And it's more not as much getting a referral. It's just I love to hear new ideas. Mm-hmm. And if I can bring one idea back from a conference and implement it, that's, that's my goal. If I get two, that's great. Um, so the networking with other agents that, um, you know, that you know, strive to have the same goals as I have, um, I, that, that's, what I lo- yeah, that's just what every day I look forward to. Yeah. I, 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 some of my best ideas, some of my best marketing ideas are from other industries. So, you know, the video book with our certification, I think I gave away a video book at the, at the event that you were at, David. And um, the video book with the 10-inch monitor that we upload videos to, we, we include that with our certification. But that's something on these listing appointments where other agents are bringing their iPad or their, their, their computer. David, you're bringing that hardcover book. I'm bringing a video book. You know, you want to differentiate yourself from the competition. Yeah, I was really impressed with the video book. Um, and you know, I'd like to talk to you further about that because I thought that was, that was great and it was um, a great presentation. Um, we have done some lifestyle videos. You know, I kind of look back three years ago. I did a lifestyle video and probably spent seven to eight thousand dollars on it. Um, you know, now they've come down so much, and you know, the the, the access to the technology and the people to do it has dropped a lot and we're looking to do another lifestyle video on a listing um, um, down in southern Maine Um, we have to get through um, uh, the time period the family's using the house for a summer home but um, I think lifestyle videos are are really uh, the way to go um, on these luxury listings it's not just the house it's it's other uh, features yeah well, life's, I mean, it, it's a point of differentiation. Tell the story of the home, you know, so that potential buyers can envision themselves there with their family and not just now but future years. I'd be glad to, you know, help you out. One of the exercises, um, uh, I'd be glad to help you out with that as well. You know, we can talk offline, David. You know, one of the exercises that we did at the training a few weeks ago is what we called our fresh eyes analysis. So, uh, there were some agents that submitted properties that uh, I use the term stale. They weren't they weren't uh, getting the activity they wanted. They were sitting on the market for a long time. Perhaps the seller was pressuring the listing agent. You got to do something different. Your contract's up, or I'm going to fire you, or whatever it is. And um, you know that's one of the services that the Marketing Luxury Group offers is we help agents uh, reposition the property both online and offline, and and provide a, a marketing strategy. So um, you know. Videos, they're not going away. 73% of sellers said they'll hire an agent who uses video to sell their home versus an agent that doesn't. So those of you, I could do a whole podcast just on videos, but you know, get a YouTube channel, start producing videos for buyers, sellers. You don't have to invest 7000 like David did three years ago. I invested 10000 three years ago because I had horses, actors, a fisherman, a boat, uh, you know, all this stuff. But uh, it's amazing how many doors that, that did open for me. Uh, your website. Oh, go ahead. Michael, you critiqued one of my listings um, in Boston. I was one of the properties you picked up on, and it was number 26, Hamilton Way in Yarmouth, Maine. And we went back. Um, you gave ideas about 
different angles. We've had this house on mine for two years, and it was great. You came back and gave us just looking at it online that it should, we should, you know, change some of the photos. Some of the photos weren't great. The red on the wall was really orangey red. Um, eliminate some furniture. And I went back and um, met with my clients and said, you know, a consultant looked at this, and we had – we had some comments that were really good. So we went back and reshot the house. Now, we haven't sold it yet, but um, the seller was thrilled to hear that an individual person not tied to the transaction just came back and gave some ideas of how we can improve online presence. Um, so, Mike, it would be interesting if you go back and look at 26 Camel Way in Yarmouth. I think the photos are being reposted this week with new, um, a new presentation based on your comments. Oh, that's, that's terrific. Well, I didn't want to bring it up on, on the podcast, but uh, th- thanks for the kind words. Um, you know, if you remember, one of the things I suggested, too, is now that you've given this home a little bit of a transformational look and you neutralized it so it appealed to the masses and you kind of took the seller's personal decorating and, and taste out of it by neutralizing it, create create that before and after portfolio. So when you go on that next appointment and there's a lot of personalization and clutter or it needs to be neutralized, you can show them. Remember, only 10% of buyers can visualize. 90% of buyers and agents only see the home the way it is the day they see it. So they can't see past your, you know, that those red walls and, and, and all the different patterns between the furniture and the wallpaper and the window treatments that I saw. And so if you can, you can, if a picture is worth a thousand words, I, but, but if you can articulate it through photos before and after, then you're going to be better off. Now, I haven't even announced this on another podcast, but we're about to, by the time this comes out, our book probably is going to be out, which is called Luxury Listing Specials. Luxury Listing Specials is the name of the book. And one of the chapters we talk about specifically We talk about how to motivate sellers to stage their home. Now, stage is a term that you and I understand, but I talk about repositioning. How do you position the home more effectively? Now, the general public doesn't understand position or reposition, so I use the term stage. But how do you position the home to be more attractive to the majority? We can't be all things to all people, but based on market research, what NAR, they put out their, their, their surveys every year and other organizations do, based on what today's buyers are telling us they want, you and I have to put our even personal taste aside when we're talking to the sellers, and we have to cater to the majority. That's correct. Yeah. So... Um, so that th- thanks for bringing that up. By the way, um, I uh, I totally wanted to s- offline ask you about 26 Hamilton Way, but uh, I'm I'm glad that you retook the photos. I know it's going to help increase you know online activity, which will increase the probability of a showing, which will increase the probability of a fair offer, and that's really what we can do. We can't force showings. We can't force buyers. It's our job to position the home most effectively through photos and descriptions to attract more interest online and offline. So kudos to you for being open to that, too, and submitting. No, no, no. It's, it, it's, um, we, we saw after you got done, we went back and looked at it again, and we saw so many things we, we, could, um, we could do things different. So it was, it, was a, it's a, it was a great thing to do. And you can do that with... Your network of people, you could say to John in California, would you look at my listings, and I'll look at yours and, and critique them. And I, I think it was very helpful. Good. Yeah, most real estate agents, uh, they're never short of opinion. Some of these Facebook groups, you know, you, you post something on there. Unfortunately, everybody's got an opinion, and you sometimes lose, leave there more confused than when you got there. So, you know, make sure you, you leave it up to somebody that knows what they're doing for sure. The last big bullet point I wanted to talk about is you, your website, um, which is davidbanksteam.com, just went over a transformational look and feel. And I, and I was very impressed. Um, and, you know, I'm a big believer that the part of the way you attract more clientele is you've got to look the part, online and offline, 
you know, how do you look social media? Are, are you showing pictures of partying? But what if people Google you and they look you up on LinkedIn or Facebook or, or Pinterest or your website? Is your message congruent with what you're putting out there? So um, talk to me a little bit about um, your website and, 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 and have you seen any uptick in activity since you, you, you went through that transformation? Yeah, so we changed um, the website. It took maybe three months for it to be um, developed. And it's Luxury Presence um, and did the, um, the website. And my website, uh, davidbanksteam.com, um, very, very happy um, with the website. I sent it to all my clients. They came back and critiqued a couple things so I could go back to the design um, Develop you know, design um, the designer that did the website and added a couple of things. What's great about this company that did our website? They were so creative and um, really changed the focus of my listings. Um, how it's presented? It's very clean. It's um, you know I'm please look at it, but I can just tell you I'm very very pleased. And we've got some great leads off the website, and I felt that I was struggling with those leads before. Um, and so um, all I can say is I'm very happy with the change. It's probably been um, 30, 30 days, 45 days for the new website. Okay. Yeah, you just about launched it when you and I met, so that's great. So I'd like to recap at the end. You know, a former teacher of mine, you, you kind of tell people what we're going to talk about, you tell them, and then you recap what you just told them, which I believe, by the way, is a great reminder for agents on your listing appointments. I tell them, Mr. Seller, here's what we're going to cover today. Then you go into, your, I, hate to, you were, you, I hate to use the words presentation, but you go into your presentation, and then you recap some major bullet points. So the major bullet points today, David, a couple things. You talked about lead with a giving hand. You give back to your clients. You donate in their name. It's a way for for you to you know differentiate, make them feel good. Um, plus, it gets you in with some of the the movers and the shakers through these nonprofits and organizations. You have the hardcover book, which you started doing about three years ago. You said in the last three months, you know, th there's been a handful of deals that you know that the hardcover book was a big part of why they pulled the trigger. And you talked about networking, the importance of networking. You talked about for you personally, you, your family moved to a, another area that catered to a little bit more higher price point. So that's how you did it. Um, you don't need to do that, by the way, folks. He did that. But you know, you can drive a half hour out of your, where you live to service a marketplace. I did that three-plus years ago. I, I traveled a half an hour out of my sphere, out of my database, out of, out of my, you know, my, my farming neighborhoods, if you will, to a town that was about six or seven towns over and started from scratch. So that's where the magic happens sometimes is getting out of your comfort zone. And then last but not least, you've had a lot of success and you're happy with your, your, your new website. So um, is there anything else that you'd like to, to share with the group today that I missed perhaps? No, um, I, can, I just really appreciate the opportunity of meeting you um, back at the last Remax event. And I really came away with some great ideas from the different um, people on the panel. And I love to share. I've got so many ideas from different people, so um, I'm more than happy to share any ideas and um, what makes me better, and if it can help another person, and I'll pick up a idea from them. Um, it's just a way for us to do the do our business smarter and um, more professional, um, and that's what's worked for me. Well, what's the best way for somebody to contact you if they have questions about your hardcover book, but hopefully and more importantly, they say, hey, David, we have a referral. We know somebody that's thinking of buying or selling out in that, that Portland, Maine area. What's the, what's the best way they should get a hold of you? Is it email? Is it phone? You have an assistant sure. who probably checks your email, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't do many emails. I have a, a person that manages all my emails and responds, but can make Get me in, put me in touch with whoever emails me. Um, it's D as in David, 
Banks, B-A-N-K-S, at davidbanksteam.com. And my cell phone number is 207-831-8033. And if I'm tied up on my phone, it goes right into a Google Voice, and you can leave a detailed message, and I can get back to you. Um, and it's um, be glad to help out. And, Michael, I appreciate your help and guidance um, at the conference and look forward to doing some networking with you in the future. Well, I, I th- thank you so much for your time. I, I, I know your, your time is valuable like all of us. So uh, keep doing what you're doing. Let me know how we can help. If we can help you with the lifestyle film, given strategies, let us know. Folks, again, some great interviews in the past. We have some great interviews coming up. David Banks uh, was, was one of the best interviews we had as far as great bullet points, great uh, what I call golden nuggets. So thank you again. If you think somebody should be a great, uh, a great addition, a great guest, or maybe there's a topic you'd like us to cover, make sure you send us an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And again, keep an eye out for our new book, Luxury Listing Specialist. It's a simple read, some great content. Remember, it's not the market, it's the marketing. Thank you for listening to the Luxury Listing Podcast. Make sure you share this with a friend. Let others know about it. Iron sharpens iron. Have a great day. Thanks, folks. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our Luxury Listing Specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher-end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to LuxuryListingSpecialist.com.